What's going on? Finally out here in Greece. We made it to the first monastery. Then got a bee by my ear. Oh my God. We're going to keep that in there though. You know, we just went into the first one. Pretty straight. I got some footage in there. A lot of the things you really can't record or take pictures of. So, you know, it's just us really walking around. But I ain't gonna lie, this is actually dope. We took a four hour train ride. Well, it's supposed to be four hours, like four and a half hours. But we made it. Just getting some pictures in. We got a couple more places we gotta stop. But this is beautiful. This is beautiful, I ain't gonna lie. Normally I don't go do the scenic stuff, but <laughs> this was worth it. Now this is on my first stop of my European tour, Greece, four days. I should have a lot of things coming because we're actually staying in Athens. So stay tuned. I'm gonna try to get some footage at the next spot. Hopefully they don't get on me, you know what I'm saying? Hey, no camera, no camera. All right, I got you. Now they say that this train ride is supposed to be four hours. It's really about four and a half, 4.45, depending on the stops that they take. Now they were doing a little bit of construction on the railroad, so we stopped. And also when we got towards the end, you see panhandlers get on and they start begging for food, like the stop before you get to where you're supposed to and then they'll hop off. This is so they don't have to have a ticket. Just tell them to walk on by. There are six Matoria monasteries on the cliffs that you can visit. Matoria is a breathtaking place. I must admit, when we first pulled up and you see the cliffs and you see the monasteries on top of it, you're going to be amazed. Believe me. Even if you're not even that big into religion, you're going to look up and you're going to say, this is breathtaking. And the look down is even better. Now, from the earlier times, the cliffs of Matoria was a perfect place to achieve maximum isolation. And this was a great place to find your peace and harmony. Matoria today is the largest archaeological site in Greece in terms of the area that it covers. Since 1989, it has become a World Heritage Site, and in 1995, it's an official holy place for Greece. I recommend that you book early and book you a personal driver to go up the hill. Now you can take the tour bus, but that's going to be a little bit crowded and you're going to have to worry about everyone getting back on and you'll be less comfortable with leaving your items within the van. We had a personal driver and you'll see him. He was going a little bit crazy singing and stuff, but he was an amazing tour guide. The first monastery that we actually are going to go to is the Monastery of St. Stephen. Now, just like most of them, you can't record too many things in there. So you will get to see a lot of the views. But once you go inside, they're kind of, you know, hey, strict, no cameras allowed. But the first monastery we go to is the Monastery of St. Stephen. Now, the beginning of life here originates around the early 12th century. Hosius Antonios in the first half of the 15th century actually took it upon himself to start to renovate the monastery. Now he started with the foundation and he built it all the way up into the church that we see today. And it is an active monastery now with active monks living inside of it. You will hear me mention that they depend a lot on the community to donate clothes and also food while they're in here because they don't leave the monastery. As you can see, everyone is masked up, so that did play a role in making it harder to see certain rooms because you have to understand the monks actually live here, so you know they still needed their social distancing. Now, the Monastery of St. Stephen is one of the more easier accessible monasteries because there's not a lot of stairs that you have to climb that we'll see at the next one. It's just a little bridge that you go across. Inside of this monastery, there are two chapels, the old 15th century St. Stephenson Chapel, which was severely damaged during World War II. And then there was an 18th century, the main cathedral that is used and dedicated to St. Charlembos and includes his holy relics. I walk straight through the monastery and we go to the back so I can show you guys the view of what it looks like over the cliff and the back side of the monastery. Now the cathedral, the line was a little bit longer and I did go in there on my own, but you were not allowed to record in there. So I didn't get any footage of that. I thought about sneaking my camera in, but then it hit me. We were on holy grounds. He's always watching. So I didn't get any exclusive photos or footage on the inside people. Man, that's crazy how they didn't build that up on the rocks like that. I ain't gonna lie to you. For them to be some monks, they were putting in work. I'm talking about putting their back into it. We took a quick stop so you can get some pictures of it. 
Ιάκ θα ακουστεί το Αλεξάνδρου η χώρα με τέρα τουρμπάι, καβά! Αν θέλετε την ευκαιρία, πρέπει να έρθει εδώ και να δείτε αυτό. Now y'all know I'm usually joking around and stuff, but this is actually breathtaking. This has me being serious for once. Now we're supposed to be going into the big boy, you know what I'm saying? The biggest one of all. It's supposed to be like 200 stairs or something like that, so. Change of plans, people. I was gonna go over there and go up them stairs, but it's like 200 and something. And the thing is, if you go up the stairs, you gotta come back down the stairs. And I ain't got that kind of energy. I mean, I got some water in the van, but sheesh, look at that. You gotta go all the way down, up through the tunnel, over here, up there, hit that, do it about phase, up there, up there, all the way up there. No, sir. <laughs> ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. That would be interesting. But I seen it from, uh, seen inside the other ones over there, and you seen inside of one, you seen inside of all of them. The second monastery that we went to was the Holy Monastery of Great Matoro. Now, this is the largest monastery within Matoria, Greece, and the oldest of all monasteries. It's called the monastery which remains suspended in the air because of the cliff formation of a gigantic rock on which they built on top of it. The Great Monterio Monastery was founded in the 14th century. St. Antanasios is celebrated as the first founder of the monastery and the organizer for the whole region when it comes to monasteries. For this reason, this foundation of the monastery is considered to be a turning point. Or even better, this is the beginning of organizing the whole region of Matoria. It's believed that Antanasios was born in 1302 in a medieval town of New Patras, and then he eventually moved out here to Matoria after he became a monk, and he lived there for a few years before actually settling in the cliffs of Matoria. Now I'll give you a little bit of the view in between these two monasteries because I didn't take that 250 plus stair challenge to go up the monastery and then just to come all the way back. So here we're in between the two. Now you can see some of the smaller ones when you look down, but for the main part we have the two big monasteries up top. Everything that the light touches is our kingdom. Unfortunately, I don't own any of this out here. I'm just a visitor, just a tourist, just looking at it. But it do look good as hell, though. You can't lie about that, though. As I was saying, when you look down, you can see off in the distance, there's a smaller monastery there. I think that one only had two monks that lived inside of it. But overall, you just look around and it's an endless view. You see the mountains, you see all the cliffs that everything is on. Now where we're about to head to, we got our crazy driver about to take us to a monastery where the older monks, they go to retire. After about 60 years, 70 years of being a monk, they go off into isolation by themselves. What you're starting to see here is a little hillside where they actually built inside of it and you see the rubble and remains of the bricks that they used to build for shelter. Now this was all built by the monks and this is on the path leading to where the older monks actually retire. <laughs> hey, when I text you too? What? I said, yo, be taking hikes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was not prepared for no hike. <laughs> You can hear me and my brother clowning around because we were not prepared for any type of hike And that's why I say you need to wear comfortable shoes when you go out to visit this place But on the side of this cliff you can actually see little caves and when you get closer I try to zoom in as much as possible you see wooden planks They created ladders they created rails and this is where the monks actually went to isolate themselves when they felt like they did something wrong While they were in the monastery and they needed some time away from everyone else here I try to zoom in and if you look in the center of your screen towards the bottom a little bit, you see the wooden planks, the wooden rails, and also to the right. Now there are ladders that are hanging now. 
Of course, there's no access to them anymore, but they left up all the structures. They don't use this anymore to isolate themselves when they feel like they did something wrong. This is used more in the earlier centuries, but it's still amazing to see that these monks actually had the, the strength and the courage to go out here knowing that they did wrong to actually think about everything that they did. So all of the caves that you're seeing, those are actually jail cells. Well, I won't call them jail cells, but that's pretty much where they are, prison. So whenever the monks did something wrong, they would go there for three or four days and they just pray. Like they voluntarily went there. I know if I ever messed up or did something, they're like, all right, Mo, time to go to the cave. Nah, yeah, I know what I did wrong. I'm correct that I don't need to stay out there for three or four days. Now, mind you, it's 2022 and I'm looking at it like, man, I'm hearing animals out here, birds. Back in the 1800s, 1900s, oh heck no. I'm not staying in no cave for no three, four days by myself, no running water. Just up there trying to pray and figure things out. Nah, not me. Once I zoom in, you can see the house on the right. Now the oldest monk, he lives there. And I think they said they, he had been a monk for over 60 years and this is where he goes to retire. Every now and then they said you can see him come out on the balcony and he'll just sit out there in the sun for a little bit then they'll go back into the house. So at this point, it's just them collecting their thoughts and they're just living out the rest of their life by themselves. Now, other monks do come by periodically and check in on them, but for the most part, they're just here by themselves. All right, there you go. The monasteries of Matoria agrees. Let me know what you guys think about this. Would this be something that you would put on your list? Now I know it's in Athens, Greece, and there's a lot of things that you can see within the city, and this is a little ways out, but I think it's definitely worth it, especially to get the experience and to see the view. Let me know what you all think. I'm Mo.ij. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.